Today I'm making fermented ginger leaf tea and ginger stem syrup. A couple of days ago I replanted my ginger and in the process ended up with an armful of cuttings. In this house we use all parts of the ginger, so here are some ideas to use the parts of the ginger plants that usually go ignored. First of all I'm removing the leaves from the stems. I'm making one heap of leaves and I'm cutting the stems into manageable size. It's pretty late in the day and I'm kind of beat, so all I'm doing tonight is prepare the ginger for tomorrow. And here we are! A lovely vase of ginger stems and a load of ginger leaves. Ginger leaves also make a delicious cup of tea when fresh, so I'm treating myself to a cup of that. Will you get back in the cup? It's the next day and we're ready to go make something delicious. I'm starting with the ginger stem syrup. Apart from ginger stems and a large pot, you'll also need a couple of lemons. That one lemon looks a bit dodgy because I zested the rind already. Cut the lemons into slices and put them in the pot. Cut the ginger stems into chunks. Around 2 to 3 inches long will do nicely. Add 2 liters of water to the pot and put it on the stove. Let it simmer on medium heat for around 45 minutes. While that's happening, I'll sort through the ginger leaves. I'm discarding any that are discolored or in any way icky looking. That's a nice lot to be getting on with, I'll do the rest later. Cut the leaves into pieces about an inch or a few centimeters big. Then get out a rolling pin and attack. We're trying to break and open up the leaf structure. If you don't have a rolling pin at hand, use a hammer or wrap them in a clean kitchen towel and step on them. If you have any anger to work through, now is your opportunity. Once you feel emotionally rejuvenated and the ginger leaves are thoroughly squished, get out some kitchen towels, lay out the leaves and then roll them up as tightly as possible. Then get out a piece of cling film and roll them up even tighter. Press down to get out any air, or as much as you can. You should end up with something like this, a sort of ginger leaf sausage. To stop the sausage from unraveling, I'm wedging it into a jar. It'll stay in there to ferment for 3 to 4 days. Checking in with the ginger stem syrup. That's looking pretty good and should at this point smell of ginger quite intensely. Once the ginger stems have simmered for around 45 minutes, get out a large bowl and a colander. My colander is being held up by some skewers since it's a little too small for the bowl. Drain the ginger stems.
Clean out the pot and put the ginger tea back into the pot. Add sugar in the proportion of 2 parts ginger tea to 1 part sugar. I have around 2 liters of tea, so I'm adding a kilo of sugar. Put it back on the stove on low heat to dissolve the sugar. Then turn up the heat to medium and let the syrup heat through thoroughly. Get some clean bottles and caps ready to bottle the syrup. Now would be a good opportunity for a taste test. Boil some water and use that to disinfect the bottles. For bottling I also get out a grabber and a funnel. My kitchen is not very big so I'm having some space issues but will be alright, don't worry. My grabber is not going to be much help here, so I'm using a kitchen towel soaked in cold water to touch the bottles. Everything is hot, so watch your fingers and be careful. Select a bottle, pour out the water, then fill it right back up again with hot syrup. Find which bottle cap fits and close the bottle tightly. As the syrup cools, a vacuum will form that will stop mold growth and help the syrup stay fresh and delicious for at least half a year, if the bottle remains closed. Once open, keep the syrup in the fridge and finish the bottle in about 1-2 to two weeks. That's all the syrup bottled, and that bowl of hot water will be reused for doing the dishes later. Label the syrup with what's in it and the date, and then we're done for a few days, as we give the leaves time to ferment. Three days later, let's finish the tea. Get out a cookie sheet and a piece of baking paper. Unroll the tea sausage. It should smell of ginger, black tea and a hint of hay. If it smells in any way unpleasant, like for example moldy or sour, something has gone wrong and you need to discard the whole lot. It's just not worth gambling with your health. If your tea smells pleasant, pull the leaves apart and spread them on the cookie sheet. Then dry the leaves in the oven on the lowest setting. The leaves are pretty dry already, so it should only take an hour or two. Once half the time is gone, mix up the leaves a little so all of them get equally dry. And here we are. Let's make some tea.
Keep the tea in a closed jar, preferably an opaque one, to keep the light out. I only have glass jars that are empty, so I'll keep the tea in a dark cupboard. Only put the tea in the jar once you're sure it's completely dry, to avoid mold. If you suspect there might still be some moisture left in the leaves, either put it back in the oven or dry it out on a counter overnight. And we're done for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you get the opportunity to grow your own ginger and experiment with the leaves and stems. If you do, let me know how it turned out. And if you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe?